What's up guys, this is Anthony from Hawkeye Rides. I'm here today at Furman Ford in Countryside. John has given us the brand new 2021 Ford Explorer XLT rear wheel drive. MSRP on this iconic silver metallic starts at 34,000. The model I'm bringing today is at $41,175. What's new for 2021? Updates to the exterior paint and interior features. Powered by your 2.3 liter EcoBoost turbocharged i4 with 300 horsepower, 310 pound feet of torque. Matted to a 10 speed automatic transmission, getting 21 and 28 MPGs. We're gonna go over all the specs and details starting now. LED signature lights and fog lamps are set on all of the Explorer trims. This has the new sports appearance package, which is around $1,595. What does it add to the front? You're gonna get the Explorer lettering and the carbonized gray, and it looks nice against this iconic gray. Also, those vertical lines that typically would be chrome in the mesh grill, carbonized as well. The lower skid plate, carbonized to just match it all off. Explorer in the headlamp assembly. I think they're doing a nice little pop, giving that luxury look to it. And the way the hood is structured, it has a good flare to it with a width of 78.9 inches, ground clearance at 7.9 inches, and a height of 69.9 inches. Set with 20 inch carbonized gray, 10 spoke aluminum wheels, axle ratio 3.36. Front McPherson strut suspension. Your rear is gonna be a multi-link independent suspension with gas pressurized hydraulic shocks and a stabilizer bar. A wheelbase at 119.1 inches, the length 198.8. Because we have that sports appearance package, no chrome. This is going to be that carbonized gray and it makes a nice sporty look, especially because we got the high gloss black polish here and we got the matte black across all the window trims. Also flaring out the fenders. I kind of wish this was that carbonized gray because it would have gave a little bit more of a flair to it, but I do like the texture they put on the side view mirrors and on your roof rails. You'll have your LED wraparound taillights, dual chrome exhaust tips. This is an option. We have it on this, that sports appearance package. Integrated right here with the carbonized gray for the Explorer. Also on top of your dual exhaust chrome tips. Towing at 5,300 pounds. If you have the ST or the Limited, towing is at 5,600 pounds. Lift gate scuff plate, that's right here so you don't scratch the bumper. I also like the spoiler lip and the shark fin. I think it gives a nice aesthetic look to the rear of this vehicle. Power lift gate going into your cargo at 18.2 cubic feet. Put the third row down at 47.9 cubic feet max maxing to 87.8 cubic feet. We have the cargo area management system, and this vehicle is set with your captain seats for the second row. Four door intelligent lock and unlock, push button start. Keep the key fob in your pocket, go put your hand here, it'll unlock all the doors, and you can also lock all the doors. A nice little luxury flair, and they're giving it to you in the Ford line. So I do like that. Ford Pass Connect with remote start, 4G LTE, Wi-Fi hotspot. This is really good because you're getting the amenities of up to 10 devices at the same time, 50 feet away from the vehicle. You can use your iPad, your phone, whatever, and you got your internet. The weight of the vehicle, 4,345 pounds. We're gonna see if this i4 turbocharged engine is powerful enough to do it in our drive. Let me know in the comments what you think about the updates of the 2021 Ford Explorer XLT as we go into the interior, go over the tech, and take this for our test run. Entering inside this Ford Explorer XLT, you're gonna get 40.7 inches of headroom, 43 inches of legroom. Front seats are bucket, they're heated. 10-way power adjustment for the driver, 8-way for the passenger. Both of them will have the lumbar support. Wireless charging pad is an option. This vehicle doesn't have it, but they have up to nine different power outlets. That's 
two USBs right here. You have a C and a regular with a 12 volt. Storage is immense. I mean, you can fit like four cameras in here. You got your tri climate control settings, eight inch infotainment with your navigation. You have the pinch, you have your swipe. This is powered with your Sync 3 voice activated AM FM HD radio Sirius XM. This model has six speakers. They do have a B&O sound system with 14 speakers that's 980 watts. I like the metal look on the bi-level dash and the piping across all of the air vents. It does give a sporty flair in the interior to this vehicle. You'll have a 6.5 digital instrument cluster. It's fully reconfigured and when you change the modes in the vehicle it gives a little video with each one. So your tow haul, your sport, your eco, your normal, your slippery, and your trail. And I like that they're doing these little flares because it just gives nice luxury amenities. Leather wrap steering wheel heated multi-function. For the door panels and the armrests, soft for the elbows, one touch up and down for all the windows. And I like the metal mesh that they put for the speakers. Storage, you could fit at least three to six 16.9 ounce water bottles. You can fit a 20 ounce here. You got your rotary gear knob. Open up in here, some more storage with the tray, nine volt charger. I like that they have an area that you can put your key fob because these are just nice luxury amenities and they get the metal look through the center. Let's see how the second row looks. For the second row, headroom at 40.5 inches. Legroom, 39 inches. You have almost the same amount of headroom as you do in the first row, which is really nice because someone tall like me, it just shows that you can fit four adults so far because we haven't went to the rear with no problems. Your third climate control, two USBs and a 12 volt, some storage in here. You have the center console with more cup holders and storage because we have the captain seats. For the elbows and for your arms, very soft. I also like that you can manually move these seats up. You can see you move them up pretty far and you can recline these back or however position you want to be comfortable. On the door panels, I like that mesh again for the speakers and cup holders, you could put about a 20 ounce in the top. You could fit at least three to five 16.9 ounce water bottles. Your air vents are integrated on the roof. You can have a dual moon roof. However, we don't have that in this vehicle, but let's check out that third row. For the third row, 38.9 inches of headroom. Again, it's a lot. They do an excellent job with the Explorer for headroom. Third row legroom, however, they didn't do so well. 32.2 inches. I put the seat in the reclining position that I was in and I have to kind of have my leg up. I can't even touch the ground. The good thing though, is these are manually folding adjustable seats. So if I move it, I can have abundance of room as you're seeing. You get a cup holder on each side and a storage that you could probably put a small smartphone. We're gonna give her a little gas so we can see this 10 speed, 300 horsepower, four cylinder turbocharged engine. I will say that it holds the RPM, so that is good because the turbocharge is already spooled up. It just doesn't feel as refined, not necessarily because of the size of the vehicle, but I think the weight will play a little bit of a role. However, you are getting good gas consumption, so it's not something you're going to really complain about because this is not the sport line of the Explorer. As you get up to a higher speed at like 50, 60 miles per hour, you hear road noise through the wheel wells and through the side windows. So the dual panel windows, they help a little bit. It's not bad. I think if they would have done it across the whole vehicle, it would have helped a lot more. Visibility is good. You have the blind spot sensor and you have the adaptive cruise control with the steering assist as well. So these are really good features to have in this particular vehicle because you're getting luxury amenities all derived on the Ford line. Braking in the car is good too, and this is a longer vehicle. Driving it as a normal everyday basis, I could definitely see a family not having any difficulty. Getting in and out of the car is relatively easy. Seeing how long the hood is, it's also easy because the line structure that they have. So you don't really have any complications. And then looking behind, you don't actually feel as if the vehicle is nearly 200 inches. So I do like that. It feels more like a smaller SUV, but a little bit larger with the width, the way it's just laid out because they do a great job with the space. So much that it's almost hard for me to hold the steering wheel in the sense if I'm trying to use both of the armrests. Ride comfort at a 40, 50, or even 60 mile per hour, it isn't bad. You do feel some of the bumps and the imperfections in the road, but these are upgraded 20 inch wheels and the seats are comfortable. 
the way they contour to your body, it just has a good sit to it and it's comfortable. I mean, you have 10 way power adjustments for the driver. Changing it into normal mode, the gear shifting kind of stays more at a two, two and a half RPM. So it seems a little bit more settled. When you put it in the sport mode, it feels like it's just gonna stay at a higher RPM. You have to kind of release the gas a little bit. There is no paddle shifters. And realistically, I don't think you would be driving this vehicle too much in a sport mode anyways, because it's fast enough to get where you need to get things done. And this is an everyday use car. For the stereo, playing with it while waiting in traffic, it's not too bad and it's really easy to use this Sync 3 software because everything is, you know, just like using a phone. So you don't have any problems with that. Checking the turn radius at a complete stop, you're gonna get about two lanes, not too bad, giving it throttle on normal. And again, once you get to like the four or five RPM, it doesn't seem to want to change gears. It just wants to keep escalating. So it's nothing to be concerned about, but it's definitely something that will give you a little bit more of a ump so that way you can get to where you need to go. We're gonna take this back to Furman Ford and Countryside, go over that reverse camera and wrap this review up. You have trajectory, the vehicle has the sensor functionalities in the rear, and you'll also see that in your gauge cluster. I'd like to thank John McVeigh here at Furman Ford Countryside for giving us this 2021 Ford Explorer XLT for our car review. If you're already a subscriber, Thank you for being part of the Hawkeye community. If not, click that subscribe button. Check out the details, the merchandise, and everything we do here at Hawkeye Rides.